158th Contact Sunday, January 3, 1982, 11.46 am. Billy says it's nice that you've brought me into the ship once again. Quetzal says I think it's better for today, as quite a lot of people are present. Billy says there, you may be right. But now, what did you think about our meeting, or how has it affected you? Quetzal says you have fulfilled your task well and used the right words, but I thought that you should have raised your voice more on some issues. Billy says so, to what extent, then? Quetzal says it would have been appropriate to make clarifications on the cooperation of the individual group members, which I had, nevertheless, clearly explained to you. This is the only way to separate the chaff from the grain. It is, indeed, unfortunate, but it seems to be the only language understood by the earth human being. Some group members in no way fulfill, not even in the slightest manner, the demands given to them, making them useless for the group and for the mission. Only profit is in their mind but not a will for cooperation and for study, and also in financial terms, only a bare minimum is contributed, even though their wealth and income would allow them to contribute a multiple of the set amount. Such group members, however, are neither useful nor convenient for the group or for the mission, which is why it is necessary that they be removed. And the best way to take this step is that the truth is given to them in harsh words, after which the guilty ones will be required to withdraw. By law, so according to the statutes, these group members would have to be obliged to provide their necessary services in equal solidarity, which should be waived, nevertheless, because their minds wouldn't change due to laws that require them to provide solidary benefits. For this reason, the truth should be brought home to them with harsh words, after which they then have to decide themselves whether a withdrawal from the community is better for them or whether the statutory given duties to be fulfilled are more important for them if they follow these. Included in the statutory given and clearly defined duties to be fulfilled, however, is also the cooperation in the monthly magazine, for which monthly contributions of the individual group members are needed. Whoever doesn't make these contributions within the scope of the duties to be fulfilled, however, violates the statutes and ordinances. But now, in order to tackle this evil, it was recommended by me that for every missing contribution, a monthly amount will be increased by 5 francs, which should steadily increase each month by 100% of that amount, if the obligation still isn't met. If the violations, nevertheless, still continue to appear, then an exclusion from the group should result when the monthly contribution amount for the monthly magazine has reached 50 francs. A group member who takes it so far that even through such measures the duty doesn't become fulfilled is not worthy of membership in the community, and above all, it still hasn't become clear to such a group member that the internal core of the community must truly be trained to an elite. But members who do not fulfill their duties referred to them can never become elite members, so for them, there only remains the way of expulsion. For this reason, I've asked you to raise your voice with harsh words of truth, through which no doubts should remain about the fact that, seriously and exactly, the articles of the statutes and ordinances are to be fulfilled dutifully, otherwise, a continued membership in the community for the fallible ones is no longer acceptable or given. Billy says I know, you did, indeed, tell me that clearly and plainly, nevertheless, it has given me no pleasure to have to be heard in this way, in accordance with your instruction. It has strained my nerves quite nicely, especially the matter with Elsie, who has given me, by the way, no oral reply to the questions that I've asked her, in accordance with your instruction. Here, this is a letter from her to you. I assume that her answer is included in it. You read it the best. Quetzal says thank you. Quetzal opens the letter and reads it. As I've already feared, Elsa is subject to her own pronounced inconstancy, which is why she isn't able to make a clear decision. Unfortunately, it hasn't changed with her yet that she always only perceives issues approaching her from her own perspective and sees these in such a way as she personally wants to see them. 
This means, however, that she very often doesn't recognize the truth and that she works herself up in assumed and self-produced falsehoods, which she contrarily defends hard, leading to aggression and differences of opinion. At the same time, her bossy nature works itself up into proportions that suppress any reason, but which then, shortly thereafter, flow into self-pity. Then, from this, there arise the false thoughts that every assistance of hers would fail and that she is being exploited. Once more, my observations clearly showed me last night that she is biased in these things as always and that she isn't willing to fix these errors. And because she hasn't already done so, it also isn't possible for her to make a definitive decision in the important matter that you've discussed with her on my behalf, as her letter shows here, to which I must say, in explanation under these circumstances, that it cannot be dealt with. The cited reasons are, indeed, trivial, as she knows very well by the former events with Sarah. Moreover, through you, I expressly let it be explained to her that her decision was required by this weekend, since we now have to make other decisions toward determinations to be seized, and not just in one year. Her inconstancy now demands us to exclude her from these concerns, after which no further discussions about this still have to occur. The following is still something, over which I must lose a few words I observed very well how you followed and executed my instruction, while you took Elsa to court with very harsh words and raised your voice. I did, indeed, notice with this that you had all sorts of trouble with speaking in this manner, as it was contrary to you. But you did it, nevertheless, even if in the minds of Elsa and the other group members, you were once again considered a bad guy and as being too hard. Nevertheless, you've done it, for it was necessary. And that was good, even the later harsh explanations about the union and cooperation of the group members. Shirkers and unwilling ones and also those, who only grab information and profit and who do not want to fulfill their duty, will, slowly but surely, become missing and expelled by this, thereby leaving only those remaining, who truly want to be conducive to the mission and its fulfillment and to their own destiny and evolution. But now, what is still to be said about Elsa I listened to your word very well, regarding the job search in Zurich. It isn't your task, nevertheless, but that of Elsa. She has to take the necessary steps herself and has to prove that she finally fulfills that which is her own task. Each of your words was of logical and hard clarity and was also fully justified, which must also be clear to her. And it will, indeed, become clear to her if she finally becomes willing to rectify her law-breaking, her unruliness, as well as her self-pity and all other evils. However, she must do this all alone and without your help as this is also the case with regard to the observance of the right way of work. I already calculated a year ago that only a full day in year-round work is beneficial for her, as you correctly cited in your explanations. Even your own detailed explanations, however, were of correctness, and Elsa should act exactly in accordance with these. She should look the true facts in the eye once and see the truth as it actually is. She should finally put aside her truly childish displays of false perspectives regarding elapsed financial concerns, etc. and honestly look the true truth in the eye. She should also finally recognize that her current debts are only due to her unruliness, unwise courses of action, and to the fact that she ignored all instructions and advice in a stubborn and self-opinionated manner. But now, she has to work herself out of this by her own strength, and help from a group member would not only be inappropriate for her but also wrong. Due to corresponding help, she wouldn't recognize or correct her errors and would learn nothing. This recognition can only come to light if she now, by her own initiative, repairs the damage caused by her irrationality. This is, however, also true for the job search which is why I must consultatively prohibit you from helping her with this. And if she is actually willing to follow my and your advice, then she will already find the job that's important for her by tomorrow. Nevertheless, you have to keep out of this, for it is neither your task, nor would it be beneficial for Elsa, who has to take the necessary initiative herself. And to say more about this would be superfluous. 
There remains only one word to say about Roland, for whom things should remain in such a way as I have advised you. Our discussions haven't produced any new results, so the observance of my advice represents the best way. Billy says that's about what I've thought to myself. But now a question did you see the different reactions, after I had recited my speech at the meeting? Quetzal says yes, there was a lot of astonishment. The fallible ones were very strictly aware of their fallibility, and they also knew very well that the speech was about them, even though you mentioned no names. Their exclamation, that they want to request their expulsion, was just a pure, completely natural reaction. Only Roland seems to be unaware of the consequences because his mental laziness and his unwillingness to produce a concentrative implementation of a change to the better do not allow him to recognize the truth. This also means that he isn't capable of adapting himself to the meditation, which is also why the Sahar Center must remain close to him. For him, I can also now give you the exact information regarding his necessary work time, as in the meantime, I have calculated it exactly. His time is 11 hours and 38 minutes, so he has the highest rate among all group members. If he now doesn't strive further toward a continuing and advanced education in every respect, however, then he will become unbearable for the community, after which he would then have to be expelled from it and would have to move away from the direct area of the center. His actions have a demoralizing effect on the group members, which cannot be borne for a long time. If he doesn't strive to do this, then his expulsion would have to occur after some time, as well as his departure. Preventing this, however, is solely within his power. Billy says I know, I've also made that clear to him. Quetzal says you must act in such a way, if you want to attain the original state again, as it prevailed at the beginning of our contacts. Billy says that is clear to me, and since you grant us this opportunity, together with yourselves, all those who are knowing in these matters also strive for that. There are, after all, still many long-established group members who have witnessed everything from the outset. The effort will, therefore, not diminish. Quetzal says that is very gratifying to hear, but now, you must go back again for I still have some things to do, but wait there are still a few things to be discussed in the matter of Ferdinand, etc., but outside of the transmission. Billy says okay, then fire away, my friend. The End